Hey, it's Drybear. The time has finally come. We have finished covering all 76 weapons in the first Descendant. So let's wrap up what we discovered through all of our hands-on testing. Now, there's a lot to go over when it comes to the idea of damage per second. And luckily there is one weapon in the first Descendant that outperforms every other weapon bar none without question it is the weapon that everyone should have in their kit that everyone should be running in their overall build because there is no better weapon than this one and i'm gonna get real close when i say this because i want you to hear me on this very point the best weapon in the game is the weapon that you can enjoy using for long periods of time that's because the first ascendant is a looter shooter you will spend long long hours grinding for something over and over and over realizing that when something says 38 percent drop rate it probably means you're gonna have to run it 38 times to get it so regardless of meta in pve games i'm always a huge fan of people playing what they enjoy what they are you know they get excited about and want to use and regardless of meta or what other people tell you or whatever is the best on paper i think you should always include in your kit something that interests you that you want to try and make strong because the spirit of PvE games is always trying to find that broken runaway combination of things that you thought of on your own and put together and you get to see it come to fruition and you're then motivated to farm a bunch in long hours and long sessions to make it stronger to prove your idea. Now I'll put in on screen the results of all of my hands on testing for this and I want to then go through explaining all of the numbers you're seeing on screen but I know there are people out there that just want to get to the data and they just that's all they're after so if you're just here for the data here is the final resulting data of all the weapon testing that we've done over the last three to four weeks uh, and just make sure you hit the like button on your way out now that you've got that set up but now let's yap about the disclaimers and the discussions around these dps checks around these weapons and how they function and what they're really used for and how they compare together first of all i wanted to address this because this has come up a lot during this process i have done this before i've worked on and shipped two different shooter games as games and worked on them after they launched as well handling live balance game design all of that you're welcome to check my linkedin or any of that if you really care that much and i don't say that to mean that i'm uh somehow infallible there's plenty of mistakes in here that will need to be revisited in the future i just say that to mean that i'm not exactly bumping around in the dark here that this is familiar territory for me when it comes to designing testing and comparing various gameplay mechanics between weapons in a shooter game the next disclaimer is around how these weapons were tested because obviously your build isn't just your weapons in the first descendant it is also your descendant what your character does how your character interacts with those weapons and what i wanted was a standardized normalized system to compare all of the weapons together that wasn't just okay if you have enzo buff on this is what this weapon does or if your name is glay this is how this weapon performs because those kinds of edge cases and niche scenarios are going to change the output and functionality as well as the weighting for all of these weapons in that so none of these outside of maybe fallen hopes aoe testing has been focused on descendant combinations and that's how you can work your way back from it to create whatever build you're looking for this is the weapon to weapon comparison all of these numbers you're seeing on screen are the weapon when it is maxed out the maximum possible dps for the weapon in its element in its most possible dps output form and we'll go through all the build sheets that i've been making over the last month to bring out the best and also to create your own build for these weapons now down below in the description is a link to the overall dps numbers for all the weapons but i've also put all of my build sheets into a uh, an album online that you can use and reference so every single weapon in the game is in this album so you can look for a build setup but first let's cover how to read the screen you're looking at because i've got a lot of questions on this throughout this process about what is this that i'm looking at how am i supposed to use this overall so the way you read this sheet that you're going to see for every weapon in the game is the bottom right the center screen build is the build that has is either the recommended build or is the build that provides the most amount of possible dps however 
Again, I'm a big fan of people creating their own builds and creating their own comfort. When it comes to grinding games, you're going to spend long hours in over and over running your head against a brick wall. I wanted to just not give you the best possible DPS or the best possible build. I wanted to give you a direction to move in and then the tools that you would need to create your own build. So what you're seeing on the bottom right is the optimal build for the weapon that brings out the best of the weapon. However, it may not be the most comfortable for you or you may want to try different options maybe you want to swap something out maybe you want to add in movement speed or swap speed maybe you want to have more reload on weapons when the reload takes too long and even if it's a dps loss you don't want to spend most of your time like every time you reload on a weapon you get angry a little bit and that starts building up over a three hour farming session and you just want to have better reload you don't care how much damage it does you don't care about any of that so you're able to swap things out on the left side of the screen these are the weightings for the modules what I did is I took the module that provides the most possible DPS out of all the modules for the weapon, weighted based on that weapon's specific stats. I have a spreadsheet that I'll link in the description as well that has a full list of all of the modules in the game based on the stats they provide when they're maxed out, the module, like the change they'll have on the weapon itself, as well as the different like sets for different ammos, things like that. All of the ammo types have different modules. There's a whole bunch there's over you know what is that over 200 almost 300 modules on here listed for all the different types and we have the the weightings for all of these so i went through and made a test for each individual module how it will apply to the weapon and also how it would end up affecting the end result dps and then we did a run for the end result dps for the weapon as well so that we look at the weapon itself and all of the stats on it i'll create a version of this that you guys can edit if you want to mess around with it there's also some options here for testing out the passive if there's a unique that has a passive like thunder Cage, Greg's Reversed Fate, King's Guard Lance, all of those have triggers for their passive that you can test out as an AoE or individual passives if you wanted to do bursts from things like Peacemaker, all of those are there. So what we did is we found the, the a module that has the biggest overall impact to the DPS on the weapon. I then set that module as the new benchmark. So that's the percentage you're seeing on the far left side of the screen. So if 100%, this is the, this is the module that has the highest possible addition to your DPS for this weapon's specific stats and stat weighting. Then, as that as serving as the benchmark, we then take the rest of the modules and compare it to that highest value module to see what the, the overall value is for that module compared to its best module. So what you could do on these weapons is you could then go to the optimal build for the amount of damage that you're looking for, find the lowest value module on the list, some of these get down to like 10%, 5%, 3%, very low, usually on the far right side of the screen. Then you can swap that module for something that makes the gun more comfortable for you, knowing that it's going to have the smallest impact on your DPS throughput on that weapon. Right above me here at the top of the screen, we have two different lists to read out as well. The first one is a stat priority, and this is basically from the stats that are available for the weapon in order from top to bottom, which ones provide the biggest impact on the weapon which stats are the most important to go for and they are in order so for example for enduring legacy firearm attack is the best elemental damage from firearm attack or f-a-t-k this is uh the the damage coming from the elemental bonuses that we get on from that which is super important and then crit damage fire rate so in that order you know which stats are more valuable than others then in the top right corner is your re-roll priority and that is when you go in game and you start preparing to have your end game version of your weapons you go to the weapon adjustment and you go to the readjustment and that's when you're going to these weapons and re-rolling the stats on them that you have all of these stat bonuses here on the left side of the screen it's important to note that these values the flat values and some of the percentages will change based on the weapon type so for example general rounds weapons will have m much less elemental damage and much less damage to factions or colossi because of how fast they fire relative to others in some cases you can get like 30,000 damage on a launcher or 3,000 damage on a, a pistol a handgun and that will change the overall weighting so when we're looking at these sheets to see which are the biggest 
value. We look up in the top right corner and in order based on percentage weighting is going to be the contribution to your damage that those rerolled stats will provide. In some cases, rounds will go down to zero because if it has too few rounds, like if it has like eight, seven, six rounds, the since rounds increase floors itself, which means it always rounds down to the lowest possible round, which means if you don't add a full round with the, the modification, then it will just lose that extra effect. So in some cases, rounds will be zero and some weapons scale better with crit chance, some, some, betters, some weapons scale better with crit damage, elemental damage, firearm attack, bonus versus attack on that. And remember that the conditionals are usually better in, in, in all cases because they're not going to be active all the time, right? So if you have bonus versus Colossi or bonus versus one of the three enemy factions for the Volgus, that's going to have a really high weighting because you're going to fight enemies that aren't of that faction or aren't Colossi and you won't have that bonus active and that's why this is usually at the top depending on the weapon you're talking about. It is also important to note that again this is not including descendant builds so some of these weapons will change their stat weighting and their priorities depending on what you have active so if you're in a situation where you can get firearm critical hit rate increase from Enzo which is actually an additive bonus it doesn't get scaled down based on the amount of crit chance you have getting 20% or more crit chance on a weapon can sometimes drastically change the value and weighting of that weapon and so you might have to recalculate those using the spreadsheet to figure out well if I always have an Enzo buff active or I'm always standing on supply, supply moisture from Valby or maybe my name is Glay and I don't have to worry about reloads or ammo consumption and I have other effects going on that's going to change the weapons overall and if I did that for every single weapon the comparison would be moot because everything would be all over the place. Place. So what I wanted was a standardized, equalized comparison point for these weapons. And again, I want to reiterate the fact that if you are someone who likes a specific weapon, you want to play with a specific weapon, you certainly can. There shouldn't be anything stopping you. And of course, there's always going to be rolling updates, balance updates. We've seen things like Enduring Legacy, as well as things like Nazestra's Devotion, all of these Secret Guarded, Greg's Reversed Fate, all of these got massive buffs that shot them way up in the list. And that can change for any of the weapons any day now. Right now, I think the biggest weapons that need the most help are going to be bean rifles and handguns that are just generally underperforming relative to other weapons in the game. And of course, you have things that have limited uh, option, right? So if you look at like Enduring Legacy and Python having lower DPS than these high power weapons, keep in mind that the high power weapons have a much smaller available ammo pool. So you would expect that the high power weapons that have ammo that is harder to keep, you can't really shoot a high power weapon all the time unless your name is Enzo or you have an Enzo nearby supplying you ammo and also in those cases you still run out of high power ammo even with rounds conversion on those you still run out of high power ammo so you would expect those to be a lot burstier and then for that reason you have to include that as an asterisk to the high power weapons compared to the more uptime related weapons. Now my hope for this list is that you use it as a resource a reference point for the builds that you create the weapons that you like and a way to compare the weapons to Together in the game as you move forward and make your own experience. This is not to say that this is going to be the end list and of course as we receive more updates these numbers will change and of course your per opinion of the weapon is going to be the most important factor. So run whatever you want, whatever feels good, use these builds as an option to make weapons work for you. Again if you want to play a weapon that's not currently popular I covered all the weapons for that reason so that you can have a build reference and a stat weighting sheet that allows you to reference that weapon and say okay i want to start making my own of one of the worst weapons in the game by the way is currently dimensional bridge the beam rifle if you wanted to make that as a weapon just because you want to as a challenge for yourself you have a baseline to use that for and i'll also mention for the weapons that end up having the exact same weighting i ended up grouping them together into a, a, a block so basically the weapons that basically they would function the same way they would have the same weightings on the mods very similar if not the exact same weightings on reroll that sort of thing i ended up putting them together on one sheet but you'll find all those sheets down below in the comments and description you'll find the full list of the weapons down below in the comments and the description as well and let me know if there's other questions or comments you have for me or drop by my live stream i'd be happy to chat with you if you found value in today's video leave a like down below leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people and don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things